Hi, my name is Evan, and welcome to the RV Cooking Show, a place where I can share with you my RV adventures and my passion for recreating regional food specialties from all across the country right here in my RV. Today we're going to talk about our nation's capital, Washington, D.C., and then we're going to make some fall-apart tender pork roast. Before we talk about Washington, D.C., though, let's get our pork roast going. Now, this is an easy and elegant dish. and In fact, it's a dish that I make when our friends invite us to park our rig in their driveway and visit for a few days. In that case, I make it in their kitchen's oven. But when I'm in my RV, I make it in my crock pot. It's got just a few ingredients in it. So first, let me tell you about the ingredients, and then we'll get the pork roast started. The main ingredient is a pork butt. You want to use a three to four pound pork butt. This happens to be about four pounds. We're also going to use a third cup of Worcestershire sauce, three quarters cups of firmly packed light brown sugar, and half a cup of apple juice. Now, I must tell you that pork butt doesn't come from the rear of the pig, much to the relief of my little friend Sarah Bell. It actually comes from the shoulder area. Also with the apple juice, I like to use these aseptic boxes. They're great to have on hand. You can pick them up in the juice aisle of any grocery store. For this recipe, I've used about half of this box, and later I'll drink the other half. So that's it. The ingredients are simple. Let's go ahead and get our pork roast started, and then we can learn all about Washington, D.C. We're going to pick up our pork butt, and we're going to put it into our crock pot. We're going to take our Worcestershire sauce, and we're going to pour it over the top of the pork butt, just like that. What we're going to do is we're going to rotate the pork butt around so we coat the entire piece of meat with the Worcestershire sauce. That looks good. That looks really good. Our next step is to create a brown sugar crust by taking brown sugar and smushing it on the pork butt nice good crust. We're going to use all of the brown sugar and just get it on there, smush it, create a nice crust. When you've got a crust on that side, turn it over. The last step of this is the apple juice. We're going to take our half a cup of apple juice and we do not want to pour this on top of the pork roast because that would wash away our brown sugar crust. Instead, we're going to pour it around the edges so it gets down to the bottom, not on top, just around the edges, just like so. We're going to put our lid on our crock pot. We're going to turn it on to high. We're going to cook it on high for about one hour. Then we're going to turn it down to low and cook it for about four more hours or until you get home and it'll be fall apart tender and delicious. Washington, D.C. is a place everyone should visit at least once. Plan to stay at minimum three days so you can take in as many monuments and museums as you desire. When we think of Washington, D.C., we think of the National Mall, that two-mile-long strip that has the U.S. Capitol on the east end and the Lincoln Memorial along the Potomac River on the west end. The National Mall is the place where Martin Luther King Jr. gave his famous I Have a Dream speech. It's also where the famous Vietnam War protests took place. While you're on the mall, you can visit the Washington Monument, or the Vietnam Veterans Memorial, or several of the Smithsonian Museums, which, by the way, offer complimentary admission. Stop at the Smithsonian's American History Museum, and you can see Dorothy's ruby red slippers from the Wizard of Oz. The Natural History Museum lets you get up close, but not too personal, with the amazing Hope Diamond. The Smithsonian's Air and Space Museum has Charles Lindbergh's Spirit of St. Louis aircraft. It's all interesting. Washington, D.C. also has a great train system. It's called the Metro, or the M for short. Hop on the M and get off at the Gallery Penn Quarter stop, and you'll be in an area where I consider offbeat attractions abound. The Ford Theater is in the Penn Quarter Station, which used to be considered the old downtown. 
Ford Theater is still an active theater, so depending on their show schedule, you may or may not be able to see the box that President Lincoln was in, but they do have a great museum on the bottom floor where you can see the Derringer pistol that John Wilkes Booth used to assassinate President Lincoln, as well as some of the clothing President Lincoln was wearing that evening. Cross the street and you'll be able to go into the house, the Peterson house, that President Lincoln passed away in. You can go in the bedroom and actually see the bed that he was on. Might be a little morbid, but it sure is a slice of history. Also in that area is the International Spy Museum, where you can go inside and you can see a KGB lipstick pistol from 1964, the Bond Aston Martin from 1965, or you can even see a World War I era pigeon camera. Lots of interesting things. By the way, the International Spy Museum is one of the few museums in Washington, D.C. that does charge an admission. Last time I checked, it was about $16 per adult. The other great unknown attraction in that area is the Smithsonian's National Portrait Gallery. It's very well put together. It was refurbished just a couple years ago and had their grand opening. And they've got portraits of American presidents to Americans now, displayed in unique individual fashions. There's so much to see in Washington, D.C. Make sure that you find a campground just outside the city that allows you easy access and come on along, enjoy, explore, and take in a piece of our American history. Well, it's been a little over five hours now and the smell inside this RV is just fantastic. The pork with the brown sugar, Worcestershire sauce, and apple juice have melded together. It's going to be a taste sensation. So let's finish up the cooking process and then we'll be ready to eat. Okay, great. What we want to do is we want to remove this little mesh that's been holding together the pork roast. So what we're going to do is we're going to use some scissors and we're just going to start clipping. We're going to clip it, kind of lift it up and off. Mmm. Next step is to take our meat fork and just gently push the pork roast down into the juices. You can tell it's ready, it's fall apart tender. Mmm, it looks delicious. The last step is our salt. What we want to do is add half a teaspoon of salt. Whether or not you use salt when you cook or put salt on only at the table, don't omit this step. This step brings out all of the delicious flavor of the meat. By the way, I use kosher salt because kosher salt dissolves quickly and leaves just a great flavor. So we're going to sprinkle the salt atop. We're going to push it down into the juice just a little bit more, then we'll be ready to serve it up on our plates. Oh yeah, just half a teaspoon will do it. Okay, the last thing we need to do is plate our meat and then we'll be ready for dinner. Tonight I'll be serving the fall apart tender pork roast with salt potatoes and green beans. And salt potatoes are just right with this dish and they're easy. All you do is take new little potatoes, boil them in heavily salted water and you've got salt potatoes. You want to use at least half a cup of kosher salt in your boiling water. They're going to be delicious with the pork roast. So let's go get the meat. It looks good. It looks juicy. It smells delicious. Oh, I think this is going to be a fantastic dinner. Oh, yeah. Well, here we have it. Our fall apart tender slow roast pork, along with salt potatoes and green beans. You can find this recipe and others from the RV Cooking Show on our website, www.rvcookingshow.com. Enjoy Washington, D.C. and the fall apart tender pork roast. We'll see you again on the RV Cooking Show.